Good morning, everyone. I hope that everybody is staying warm because it's quite cold where we're at. Yeah, it's dipped down into the lower 20s here, which may not seem all that cold to some of you, but for us on Sunday, we were up in the 60s, and so, yeah, three days later, it really feels cold, let me tell you. Very cold. Anyways, yeah, I got wonky hair today. As I turned on my, my camera and I looked at myself in the, in, at the camera, I'm like, oh, what's going on here? Why is this all sticking up? So, yeah, if you see this, like, little, little weird pieces going on, yeah, don't know. I must have slept on it wrong. Yeah, bad hair day, what can I say? But anyways... Today, I am going to do something else that my husband has asked me to do, and yeah, I'm not really sure what that's going to look like yet, because what he's asked me to do is to make visitor cards for the back of the pews. Yeah. What can I say? Okay. How would you like this to look? I don't know. Come up with a couple of ideas. Okay. I will do that. <laughs> So, yeah, it's going to be one of those days today. Yeah. Not going to get done my lemon ginger marmalade, but that's okay because, yeah, I grated up my ginger. And you know what? That is not a fun project at all. Then I went online and I read that if you freeze your ginger, you, you peel it and then you freeze it, that it's a lot easier to grade. And so, yeah, peeled it, threw it in the, in the freezer because... That was not fun at all. And I tried it in the food processor and yeah, that just destroyed it. And I thought, I am not wasting all this ginger, you know. So anyways, yeah, it's in the freezer. So that's where I'm at. And I sure do hope that you want to stick around for a little bit of my day. And yeah, I'll talk to all of you in just a little while. Well, yeah, it has been two hours later and I have no idea if this is what he wanted or not, but what I came up with, and I know this is going to be backwards for you folks, but what I came up with was, it just says, Sandy Lake Alliance Church, and underneath here, in, in small letters, it says, to know you better and to minister to you more effectively, please complete this card. And then I have the date and the phone and a name and an address and an email, and then my husband's name and his phone numbers. And I said, we want to sincerely thank you for being with us today. Please join us again. So I, I made, um, I actually did a watermark with the seal of our denomination of the Christian Missionary Alliance. But after thinking about it, because we're just going to put this on a copier, I don't know if that's going to work. I don't know. I don't know if that'll look bad. So what I did then is I just made a copy um, of it with out that <laughs> seal of our of our um, of our denomination so i don't know when he gets up i'll show it to him and i hope that this is what he wanted because i have not okay what can i say that's just the way it's gonna go but what i have decided to do because i realized that I always make my husband lunch for him to go to work. I mean, he's gone for 12 hours. You know, that's how long it is for him to get to where he's going and to get back home. So I always pack him a nice lunch. And guess who doesn't have anything? Yeah, I even ran out of all of my jellies that I have in the freezer. I guess he was taking them out of the freezer and using them. And I didn't realize because, yeah, they're not a one. Not a one. And I don't normally buy jelly, so, you know, what can I say? It's just the way it's going to go. I decided that I would make some meatloaf. That way, the meatloaf would be cold enough, you know, I cook it, put it in the refrigerator, and yeah, slice it up, and they'll have meatloaf sandwiches. So yeah, let's make some meatloaf. Well, the meatloaf recipe that I'm going to be using, it comes from the cookbook, from the Women's Home Companion cookbook from 1945. My mom had one of these and that's why I got this. And so this is the recipe. 
It takes one beaten egg, three quarter cup milk, one cup dry uh, breadcrumbs, two pounds of ground beef, two tablespoons of finely chopped onion, two teaspoons of salt, a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper, and either ketchup or chili sauce to spread on the top. So anyways, I'm not making two pounds. I'm only using one pound of ground beef. So I just cut all that in half. Well, with the exception of the egg, because yeah, not sure I could, yeah, we won't go there. But anyways, use the whole egg. <laughs> and my ground beef happens to be um, grass-fed ground beef. And so since I'm putting it in a cast iron skillet, I buttered my cast iron skillet a little bit because there is not a whole lot of fat in the grass-fed ground beef. So if you ever buy grass-fed ground beef, yeah, it's not like your normal grocery store beef. You most likely need to grease your skillet or whatever pan you're putting it in. And then what I'm going to put on top is my own homemade chili sauce that I make. And yeah, I actually have a video of how to make this because this is absolutely delicious. I have a sweet one that I like, and then I have one that's got more of a you know, more heat to it for my husband. So that's what I am going to put on. And maybe I can find that video and link it to at the end of this one. But yeah, I know sometimes it's hard to find these videos. What can I say? But anyways, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And hopefully it'll turn out really good. So I'm just going to mix all this up and get it in my pan and put it in my oven. It says a 350 degree oven and I have to make my oven hotter. I've been meaning to get one of those, um, a, a thermometer to put in my oven because I honestly, I think that it's lower than normal. So yeah, what can I say? Anyways, I will talk to all of you in just a little while. today's devotion, we will be reading in Romans chapter 1, verse 12. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. The days leading up to Christmas are a busy time of year for buying gifts in preparation of the big day, Christmas Day. Looking for that perfect gift for our family members and friends, hoping that our gifts will be something that they will enjoy and appreciate. But let's not forget who we are celebrating on Christmas Day. Jesus is the reason we celebrate Christmas. It's his birthday. So to forget about him is like preparing a birthday party for someone and inviting the guests, but then forgetting to invite the person whose birthday we're celebrating. And this got me to wondering, is there a gift that we can give to Jesus this Christmas? Is there something meaningful or valuable that we can give to him? Is there anything he doesn't already have? Well, Romans chapter 11, verses 33 to 36, declares praise to God for his wisdom, knowledge, and glory. And it reads, Oh, how great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and his ways. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to give him advice? And who has given him so much that he needs to pay it back? For everything comes from him and exists by his power and is intended for his glory. All glory to him forever. Amen. Now, I want you to keep in mind that this is a letter. There was no chapter and verses when it was written. So let me continue reading to the next verse. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. You see, the very best gift that we can give to Christ is ourselves. In gratitude and in humility and with love, we can give ourselves completely to him, our heart, our mind, and our will. 
It's just what the Lord is longing to receive from each of us. So this Christmas, maybe we could hang an extra stocking, one for Jesus, and every day ask ourselves what Jesus would want the most from us. And then each day, every day, leading up to Christmas Day, put in love. When we are loving, we demonstrate God's love. Put in joy. Joy is the natural reaction to the work of God. Put in peace. His peace is with us and he desires for us to live peaceably. Forbearance. Forbearance is forgiveness. God has forgiven us. Put in kindness. When we are kind, it is proof that God is working through us. Put in goodness. God is good and he resides in us and put in faithfulness. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Put in gentleness. God's gentleness allows us to be gentle with others. And put in self-control. The Spirit gives us the power to have self-control, which is the ability to control oneself. Then on Christmas Day, Jesus' stocking will be overflowing with warm hearts and stretched out hands of giving. All the shining gifts that help to make peace on earth. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And remember, that Christ desires our hearts to be committed to him. After all, it's the Lord's birth we celebrate. And this season, let each one of us do our part. Like we're told in Luke chapter 2, verse 12, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth, goodwill toward men. God bless, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Music